Hello, welcome to Unit 5, using if statements. As in real life, it's often required in programming to take decisions. Consider, for example, the following sentence. If it's raining tomorrow, I'll clean the basement. After that, I'll tidy my cupboards and sort photos. Otherwise, I'll go swimming. In the evening, I'm going to the cinema. In this sentence, it's not 100% clear what the actual meaning is. In a normal conversation, you would probably guess this from the context. A possible meaning of the sentence could be the following. If it's raining tomorrow, I do the following things. I clean up the basement, I tidy my cupboards, and I sort the photos. Otherwise, that if, if it's not raining, I will go swimming. In the evening, independently if it's raining or not, I will be going to the cinema. And this possible meaning of the natural language sentence is also represented by the graphic in the slide. So there is this uh, first shape that represents the condition, yeah? and then depending if the condition is true or false, different paths are taken. And finally, there is the last you know, step, the last action going to the cinema. So, how to implement this in Python? Again, it's showtime. We're switching over to our notebooks. Um, download the notebook, start your Jupyter server, and open the notebook if you want to follow along. The motivation is the same I've showed you just in the slides, so I'll skip this for now. But now the question is, what do we need to do, or what do we need to have to implement this yeah, conditional control flow in Python. Basically, we need two things. We need a possibility to formulate a condition. So we need the possibility to formulate if something is true or false. And we need to specify what happens in each of the two cases. For example, if it's raining, I want to do this part. And if it's not raining, I want to do that part. And that's what I'll show you right now. First, we'll talk about conditions, and afterwards, we'll talk about the if statement. So what is a condition? A condition is something that's either true or false. We already know these two values from the discussion of data types and Boolean values. But what we need right now is a way to have a statement that results in either true or false. For example, if we have an integer variable h, we would like to compare it. And if the h is equal or larger to 18, we would like to return true. And if it's smaller than 18, the result should be false. And to formulate this kind of conditions, we can use the comparison operators. There are different comparison operators in Python. The most important ones I have summarized here in this little table. So the first one we need to talk about is the check for equality. So the check for equality is here in the first line. Check for equality, the operator is two equal signs. So, if you want to check if two values are equal, you would use the two equal signs. And in the table, I have an example that results to true and an example that results to false. For example, two is equal to two. This statement would be true. Two is not equal to three, so this statement would be false. We can also check for inequality. The operator to do this is the exclamation mark followed by the equal sign. We can check for smaller, larger, smaller or equals, and larger or equals. Soon I will open up, um, we will try all these comparison operators in a small exercise soon. But before we do that, one small caveat. You have to be very careful when you use the equal sign and when you use the check for equality. 
as you already know, a single equal sign is simply an assignment. You assign a value to a variable. The comparison is the two equal signs. And that's a very easy error to make when trying to formulate um, conditions. So I'll show you in the exercise what happens if you do this. And finally, it's also possible to formulate complex conditions in Python by combining simpler conditions using AND, OR, or NOT. So let's try this out. In order to familiarize ourselves with the different comparison operators, I have provided some examples here you could try out. So I would suggest you now post the video, try these different operators, try different combinations and see what the results are. So welcome back. Let's try different things. So for example, let's try if two equals two. Huh? The result is two. Hmm. The result is true. Of course, two is equals to two. Now we can try a little bit more complex things. We've learned in the previous units about data types. Is two as an integer equal to two as a floating point number? And this is also the case in Python. Let's try something more complex. Is this statement true? Of course not. This is false. And we can assert this by using the unequal comparison. So two is not equal to the floating point number ending with one. And if we execute the cell, we receive the result, which is true. So let's try something else. For example, let's compare different strings. So is ABZ smaller than ABD? And this is also true. One nice effect we can have with, with strings in Python, you know already about lower and upper cases. So let's do the same comparison. What is ABZ compared to ABC as upper cases, and this is false. That looks strange because yeah, ABC compared to ABC, maybe you would have guessed it is equal. Yeah, let's compare this as well. And you see the statement is still false. What happens in the background is that the What's happened is in the background is that the actual representations of these letters, which are in Python represented in the Unicode um, encoding system, are compared. And in this encoding system, ABZ as upper cases has actually lower <laughs> values than ABC as lowercase um, letters. And that's the reason why. So this comparison is false, while the comparison if ABZ as lowercase letters is bigger than ABZ as uppercase letters is actually true. So let's try the more interesting stuff. So let's try to compare, for example, one, the integer number, two, true, the Boolean value, and we see these two are equal. In comparison to that, if we compare zero to true, these twos are not equal. What you see here is what's called truthiness in Python. All values that are not the initial value of a data type are treated as true in Python. But as a recommendation, I would suggest not to rely on these kind of statements because usually they are harder to read. Now, let's try again. You should always try to make it explicit. Yeah? Instead of comparing zero to true, it would be much better to compare zero to another number. 
And before moving on, let's also try a complex condition. So if we, for example, say one is smaller than zero or one is equal to zero or one is larger than zero, we of course get the expected result of true because one of the three parts of this complex condition is true, this one, and as a result, the whole statement evaluates to true. If we change here, for example, to end, so each part of this complex statement needs to be true. This is obviously not the case, and therefore the result is false. So, as we now have seen how to formulate conditions in Python, we can now have a look at conditional statements. In Python, there are two special keywords, namely if and else, that can be used to formulate conditional statements. I have here like a little abstract The little image here shows an abstract representation of a conditional statement in Python. Conditional statement looks as follows. Conditional statement starts with the if keyword followed by a condition, yeah, a condition like the one we just formulated, and then we need a colon. Then we have all the statements that are executed when the condition is true. And then there is a second optional keyword, the else keyword, also followed by a colon, and all the statements that are executed if the condition, yeah, the condition up here is false. One important thing to notice, we haven't seen this so far, so there is an indention happening after the if and the else statement, and this indention marks a code block. So all the statements on the same indention level, yeah, below the if statement, basically are the statements that are executed if the condition is true. So that was quite abstract. Um, let me show you this with an example. We start with a very simple example. In this example, we ask the user to input a number, and then we try to compare if this number is larger than 100 or smaller than 100. If it's larger than 100, we output the number followed by is greater than 100. So let's give this a try. If I execute the cell, I need to enter a number. Let's enter 404. And 404, of course, is greater than 100. Let's execute the cell again. Now I enter 42 and we receive no result. The reason is the print statement is only executed if the condition here evaluates to true. If we entered 42, the condition evaluates to false. And though the program continues after the if statement and there are no additional statements in this example, so nothing is printed. Let's extend the small example a little bit more. We now want to output if the number is greater than 100 or if the number is smaller or equals to 100. And this is exactly what is shown in this small example. So we have, um, so we have again the input statement asking the user for a number. Then we compare this number to 100. If this comparison is true, we execute this program code. We execute this statement. If the condition is false, the following statement is executed. So let's see this in action. I run the cell. First thing I enter is 404. 404 is greater than 100. That's already what we've seen before. Now let's try a smaller number. Let's try 42. 42, of course, is smaller or equals to 100. And now just to, to be sure that our program is actually correct, we enter in a third try the 100. And as you see, 100 is indeed smaller or equals to 100. 
above, I already talked briefly about code boundaries. So in Python and generally it's that all the statements that somehow belong together, we will see this, for example, in later units with functions, um, are indented. So indention marks code blocks that somehow belong together. And this has some consequences. For example, indention or white space in Python is relevant. It has a meaning. So you can't just go and indent some lines arbitrarily. If you try it, it's what I've done here in this example, and you execute this program, you get an error message. And the error message is an indention error. Because at this point, line two, it's not allowed to indent the code. There is no code block that could be started. So we have no if statement, for example. Therefore, it's not allowed. So if we just indent this line two, we get an error. In order to fix the program, we need to fix the indention and then the program runs. And that's also what we've seen in the previous example. Through the indention here in line three, we see the code the code block that belongs, for example, to this if statement. So, let's test our understanding of code blocks. Have a look at the following program, the one that's in this cell, and try to think what would happen if you execute this program. So, what would happen if you enter the number 100? And what would happen if you, for example, enter the number 42? So let's check together. We have an if statement. The if statement starts up here. If the condition is true, this code is executed. If the condition is false, everything after the else is executed. And then we have a print statement in line six. And this print statement is not indented. Therefore, it will be executed independently if this condition is true or false. Let's give this a try. I execute the cell. Let's enter first our 404. We get the result that 404 is greater than 100, and afterwards the done, as expected. The same happens if we, for example, enter 100. 100 is smaller or equal to 100. Yeah, that's the else statement. And again, we see as a result the done. And just to show you, what happens if we change the indentation? So if I indent this print statement, it now belongs to the code block of the else, the program is executed differently. If I now execute the program with 404, I don't get the done because the done is only because line six, which is responsible for printing done is only executed if the else path of the if statement is executed. And this is only happening when the condition is false. Let's try this again. We enter 42. And in this case, now we receive the done. So now it's again your turn. There is a small exercise. In this exercise, you should write a conditional statement. And this conditional statement asks the user for a name. And if your name is Harry or Harry Potter, the result should be, welcome to Gryffindor, Mr. Potter. Otherwise, the result should be, sorry, Hogwarts is full. Pause the video, try to solve this exercise yourself, and I'll continue afterwards with one possible solution. So, welcome back. Let's try to solve this exercise together. We need an input function to get the information from the user. So, input, please enter your name. A 
And the next thing we need is, of course, a conditional statement. So we need to check if our name is Harry or Harry Potter. So we check if name equals. Remember to be careful, comparison to equality is done via the two equal signs. If our name is Harry, then we should print Welcome to Gryffindor, Mr. Potter. And if our name is not Harry, we should print, sorry, Hogwarts is full. So let's try this out. And I know it's not solving the whole exercise, but I'm trying to build the solution step by step. And that's something you should do as well. Okay, if I enter the name, if I enter my name, Christian, of course, I'm not allowed to enter Hogwarts because I'm unable to perform magic. Let's try the name Harry. And Harry is welcome to Gryffindor. But what's not working right now is if we enter, for example, Harry Potter, yeah, Hogwarts is full. And why is this the case? Because in this condition, the name is compared exactly to one string, Harry. And Harry Potter is a different string, so this condition is false. Consequently, the lower part of the else statement is executed. Let's fix this. How could we fix this? We could formulate a complex condition. So we use the or statement, if my name is Harry, or my name equals Harry Potter, then I'm welcomed, otherwise I'm not allowed to join. Let's try this out. If I enter Harry, it's still working, I'm allowed to join Hogwarts. If I enter Harry Potter, it's working again, I'm allowed to join Hogwarts and the Gryffindor house. And if I enter my name, I'm still not allowed to join. Of course, there are still some minor edge cases we could consider. For example, if I enter the name or lowercase, I'm not allowed in. The same happens if I enter, have a little typo. For example, if I type Harry Potter, with a capital O. Again, I'm not allowed in because this condition evaluates to false. We will see later on in the course how we could solve this situation. So we need a little bit more information before I can show you how we could also solve these cases. So let's switch back to the slides. What have you learned in this unit? You've learned that decisions are implemented using if statements, that there is a special syntax for these if statements, namely the if keyword and the else keyword. You also have learned about code blocks and that indention is required and relevant in Python. And it also helps you to make the programs a little bit more readable. And finally, that conditions can be constructed using the comparison operators. Thanks for watching and see you in the next unit.